Hey you. Yeah, you. You ever scroll on YouTube and then all of a sudden you see a video titled, I made a custom map, or moved industries, move industries this, moved industries that. Well, let me introduce you to Railroad Studio. Ta-da! Okay though, on a serious note, what the heck is this? This is Railroad Studio, and it is a third-party tool that acts like a world editor in Railroads Online. How you actually you know, use it is you click this, choose file, and we need to go find our save games. And it tells us right here we need to type this in. So if I go up here to the top, percent local app data, percent backslash ARR backslash saved backslash save games. And if I hit enter, ta-da, you can find your save games. And I actually have it pinned on my quick access. So that's for me. And I am going to use slot two. Actually, let's use slot five since this is my trackling 101 world. And here it is. Here is Trackling 101 as it currently stands in Mirrored Studio. What does this all mean? Well, in simple terms, everything in brown is the groundwork. This is all the groundwork we see here, everything in brown. Um, blue is a steel bridge, brown is a wood bridge, and then it has different colors to showcase it. I have no idea what's going on there, we're not going to worry about it, but everything in brown showcases a bridge of some sort, and everything in blue is a steel bridge. And we have gray to show stone wall and the bigger brown section to show groundwork. You can toggle this by clicking layers over here. And let's say get rid of fill. And now it will just show you the track. It still has bridges because we didn't toggle it. Bridges and walls. Now, ta-da. It is completely empty of all the fills and stuff. Everything else though is still intact. We can see engines. I can see all my tracks, switches more specifically buildings, everything is there and everything is a little bit more accurate. Now I can turn it back on by clicking these switches. It's also really cool by having these two toggles, grade and curve radius. If I toggle grade, we can see the grade of track pieces. So here I have a 0 0.07 or 0.7% grade. If I go over here to the smelter, we can see the grade here. And I did a good job because it is actually 3% all the way down. Except for right here for some reason, 3.8. But that's only for a short little section, so I'm not too worried about it. Percent, barely anything. Over here, we have a 3% grade to the iron mine. And so on, so on. You can look at more specific information. You can see our hump, our beautiful 10%. And yeah, it just gives you some different things. And you can toggle it if you want to see where players are. Like there's me, uh, if you want to see where trees, uh oh, <laughs> if you want to see where trees are, that is fine. Um, and yeah, just basic points. So what else do we have with Road Studio? Well, uh, it's still rendering the trees, even though I have it turned off. We already said it shows players. We also have this toggle here, switch turnout radius and then control points. If I really zoom in here. And when I get rid of the control points for a second, it's telling me the radius of the curve. So it's a 77 meter radius for every switch is what it's telling me here. I can get rid of it. Now if I do control points, what is happening here? I believe from the looks of it that it is just showing you the attachment points of each spline. And like which direction. So I, I attached it this way. I attached the spline this way. And you can see the different segments I probably used. That's my understanding of what this is. Now, the big one over here, industry movement tool. The industry measurement tool, my bad. The actual point of it from what I can see is that if you click these arrows here, it gives you a certain number. It actually gives me um, a value to where I can move the industry. If I wanted to move the freight depot all the way over here, I would need to probably plug in these values here. 
However, um, I actually did just try this, I'll be honest with you, and it didn't seem to work for me with my testing. So I'm actually going to show you the main way I know how to move the industries. The first thing you want to do is you want to go back into Roads Online and place a telegraph station. So I forgot to mention kind of the important thing is I believe it's easier to do this on an empty world than the one you've built on. Uh, I'll show you in a second when we go back to our studio why this is the case. But uh, since we're here, let's just do that thing. I want to take a telegraph office and you know, anywhere in the world. And my goal right now is I want to move the logging camp over there to somewhere over here. And I'm going to place the telegraph station like here, kind of close to the mountain, but I'm giving myself space to make sure it fits. So after I have that telegraph station, I am going to go save. This is slot four that we're in. So let's leave the session and go back to where it's on our road studio. So before we go and mess with the industry thing, I want to show you the problem with just using your existing map. If I place a new telegraph, like for a moved industry on my existing map, like which telegraph office is it? I got four right here in a row, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Like, how do you know which one to select basically? That's why it's always easier to do this kind of just one at a time slowly uh, using an empty world. Okay, so now I change slots one more time and this is just the empty world. And you can see here we have nothing except the industries and then our new telegraph office. So what I'm actually going to look for is I'm actually just going to click on the telegraph office and I have a drop down menu here and I can select from any building in the game. So I want my login camp to go here. Now just to make sure the game doesn't glitch, I'm also going to go to the login camp and replace it with a telegraph office. So there's an even trade. You probably don't have to do this, but I would probably recommend just not having duplicate industries as to not break the game or cause any weird glitches. So we're just going to test this to see if it worked and I'll be right back in Rose Online. And here she is. Here is the locking camp. It did in fact move and you can see our telegraph office all the way over there. Yeah, I have my industry moved. However, it's not perfect. I don't think I can run a good train in here unless I back it up. So I think I want to turn it so the tracks can just go nice and through it. And I do want to pull over his extended real quickly. So again, here is the logging camp. You can see it's turned. It's not in the correct orientation. So we can probably fix it again to make sure it follows or fits better in this little cutout, I'm going to say. But the benefit of this, at least in this case, is we don't have to do as big of a trip between the logging camp and the sawmill. Be quick, so we can just feed it constantly, constantly, constantly. So that should be fun. Now let's go ahead and fix the radius thing real quickly. Back in Road Studio, I did change the save again. It's now slot three, the one we downloaded, just to make sure it's fresh and everything's good. Now the logging camp was turned, and we're gonna look here in this last column for rotation, and that's where this guy comes in. Yeah. If we're looking just to turn things, you know, in a circle, this is what you want. Roll changes its, I'm gonna say side to side, if you want it on a diag or not. But we're not gonna worry about it. So yeah, we need to twist it a certain amount. The problem is it's more like, I'm gonna say flat, it's horizontal. The other interesting thing is to note the logging camp, it's, I'm gonna say front, it faces this way, it faces out like this, uh, uh, down to up. If I were to put it to, let's say, yaw equals 90, what would happen, it would be completely flat this way. If I were to put it to 180, it would then sit straight up and down. So I need to, I want to tilt it, maybe let's say backwards a little bit. So 90 is completely flat. If I go 89, it's a little to the left. So if I do 45, it's going to be really strong. So I might have to do like zero. I'm actually thinking maybe 10. Let's do maybe like 13. And now that I'm done, that's the angle it's going to be at. So it should have changed. And we can click our yellow download. Once you download it, you have to rename it to slot whatever. So I'm going to name it to slot three. This is just for me. 
you can name you can rename it to slot one through ten so one two three four five but you just got to rename it slot number save i'm going to put it in my save games folder replace the file yes now i'm going to go back into rows online okay let's see how it turned out yeah a lot better now it kind of fits in here pretty nicely however i'm, I'm looking at it over here if I replace a rail, let's see if I can get it on the grid. If I replace a rail, exactly, it, it would clip here. So maybe I'd have to move it just ever so slightly back off the mountain. But otherwise, technically it is in place. I don't need to do anything else um, except maybe change the values to make sure that it actually you know, works. But she is done. The logging camp has been moved. This is what you kind of have to do in, to, for the moved industries. First, you want to place telegraph stations, or maybe one at a time, maybe two at a time, just depending on how you're feeling. And you want to test, basically. Find locations you want to do. I want to pull up where it's extended. The point of moved industries is to make the game yours. It's to put your own little twist on the game. It's how many times can you just relay the same track going to the same places. Personally, I've done similar routes probably three or four times now in each world I've ever done. And I, it's honestly just a nice change of pace to move the industry. So I put the logging camp here, but what I don't like is how close it is to the sawmill. I think it's too easy. So I might put the sawmill all the way over here just to make it some really long journey and make it harder for myself to actually play the game. I might move the smelter over here to this plateau. I might move the freight depot all the way over here in the waterfall. I might keep the refinery. I might put the refinery all the way back here just to make it some really long journey. But the point is, again, you, you make it your own and that's the beauty of this and how we can do it. I have a few more things to show you in Rose Studio, so let's go back there and we'll wrap up things. For the most part, in terms of moving the industries, let's run it back one more time to figure out what we need to do. Pick an empty map, and I'll actually put a link to um, my empty map, so if you want to have a empty version of the map, you can. I'll leave that up for you to grab. But you want to have an empty map and the ability to put just to place telegraph stations wherever you want maybe find strategic locations maybe mix up make it really condensed make it really expanded it's up to you but i would probably do it maybe one or two at a time just so you can keep track because if you look here i have a lot of telegraph offices so it might get hard for me to keep track of it or once you find your location you click on the telegraph office you want take this drop down and pick whichever building whatever you want to be there now, once you're confident that's where you want it, you have to go over here to the rotation to change the how it's rotated. Now, once you find the telegraph office you want, you need to click industry measurement tool. And what this will show you is its front and its side. The red arrow is its front. The green arrow is its right side. For instance, this water tower or maybe cooling tower, whatever it's holding here, it's facing down so it's probably angled maybe negative 160 it's probably my guess and so if i want to make it face upright i would have to do maybe 90 or zero but basically the red arrow is showing you where the front is so based off of that i can go back pick that telegraph office and let's say okay so that was it's facing down at a negative angle i want it to face positive 53. Okay, once I'm satisfied with that, I have to hit the green arrow to confirm it. Now, every time you make a modification, it will turn yellow. But I've already made one modification and it will stay yellow. I can do whatever I want here. Ta-da! And it stays that way. But now I can just download the save and it should work. Some of the last tools we didn't really go over are on the main screen. So that is how you would, you would move industries, but let's kind of cover the rest of the tools real quickly. From right to left, we have this one, the circularize spline tool. What that does is it shows you the, the radius of these splines. And if I click on them, you see here, it's actually giving me a circle based off the radius I picked. And so you can see all four of these are slightly different. So if I were to click this, 
you see it changed radius. Same thing here and in here, right here. It's 100. What about here? 114. So now it theoretically made a smoother curve. If I go over here, up, oh, I see that it just changes it to make it a, a smoother curve. If I click this piece, smoother curve. If I click this piece, smoother curve. If I click this one, so on, so on. So you can just go around and try to fix the angles at which your curves are at. I personally don't think you need to do this because if you lay your track well enough in the beginning, then there's no reason to try to alter it. If it works, it works. Um, that's really all that matters, but I just did it there just to kind of demonstrate it. The other thing is I have a delete tool. So I click on a piece, I believe. Oh, my bad. You can only click one tool at a time. So if I get my delete tool, it basically acts like our standard demolish tool. It is gone now. And when I download the save, this piece will also be gone. There is also this guy, the tree brush. And if I just, it did crash on me, so I reloaded it and everything. But the tree brush allows you to brush trees, paint trees. Now this guy, <laughs> uh, I haven't messed with this, but I kind of want to experiment now. I'm going to smart plant all the trees. And the smart plant means it's going to replant all the trees, but it's going to try to avoid key things like industries and tracks, maybe other buildings. So once that is done, we'll go back in the Rose Online and check it. The frames drop down just gives you a bigger view of all your um, trains and stuff. So if I were to click it, it zooms in on the specific one. If I go to the actual frames page, it gives you more specific information about all the engines. You can actually do a lot of cool things with this information. It gives you, you can do maybe do specific calculations if you're into that stuff. You can fill the tank. You can just do a lot of stuff and manipulate it however you want. However, there's a cool thing here. You might see online of uh, people be able to break the text in Rhodes Online or do a lot of crazy things. With Rhodes Studio, you can do longer texts on the engines. And the most unique one is the Shea. So the interesting thing about the Shea is it has a very limited character amount. If I were to type my full Rura name, I don't think I could. Ivory and... Okay, great. It did so there, but I don't like how it's on one line. So what I can actually do in game is I can type carrot br carrot and it will make it two lines, but it doesn't fit. So if I do a character and, okay, cool, it works. But what if I want to do, you know, multiple texts? What if I wanted to do like east broad top or something? <laughs> I don't know. Um, but bigger text, you can actually do that with Rarid Studio. And also since we're here, it did work. It did replant all the trees correctly. So if you're in an empty world, you can, actually what I'm gonna do is build all the track and replace all the trees using Rarid Studio. It should be rather easy. I have a limited character amount, but if I go back to Rarid Studio, I have the shade here, I just bought it. Right now it's sitting here. It doesn't have anything for its name, I believe. Yep, it doesn't have anything for its name. So what can I do? Well, I, I'm gonna make a compound um, company. I want to put ivory and eastern carrot br railway company. And I'm going to save that ivory and eastern railway company. It's a pretty big name. I'm going to do the download and go back to roads online. Here comes the moment of truth. Let's see if it worked. Bada boom, bada bing. It does work. You can use Road Studio to kind of break the character limit with the natural game and you can do longer text like this. And I'll share that last little tidbit again. It's useful on the cook, to be more specific, the cookies, I should say, either the 280 or the 260. But if my tender here, if I put Ivory and Eastbrook, oh, they fixed it. That's nice. But on the previous version, it would extend through the tender. So if I were to do carrot br carrot and I type eastbrook again 
it double text it. It stands for break, as in line break. And you can do a lot of cool stuff. I can do another one, granted it's in the character element, and do a spaced. So if I change this now to like, let's say, to now instead of East Brook, maybe I can change this to Eastern. And it's very spacious. Might look good on some projects, but this is how you do it. It's, or carrot, br carrot. Yay. So I believe that is it. This is just supposed to be your general overview of Railroad Studio and how it can work. Um, you have a lot of potential with it. You can alter the map. You can move industries. You can edit text on engines and cars. You can do a lot of cool stuff like fix the curves and make them all very circular. Like if I were to click this tool and go here, it fixes it. What if I do this one? There you go. It fixes it. it. makes it, again, more circular. I can do this all around my layout if I really wanted to. It should make your track more circular. I don't feel like I need to do it for my case. I think the track I've laid is rather decent without it. But if you want to, it's up It's up for you or it's up to you. You can edit how you see fit. Remember, disclaimer, you can only click one tool at a time. So if I want to now delete stuff, I can do that. Goodbye, goodbye, goodbye. And it's gone. The tree brush allows you to plant, but it did cause me to crash with it. So be careful clicking it. Trees, you can cut all the trees in the world. Plant all the trees. That means everywhere. Default map smart plant trees as in it will avoid your cars track industries smart and then smart cut the trees basically if you have a default map you can if you plant all the trees you can then smart cut the trees which means it will do the same thing it will trim all the trees around your tracks and industries in a good manner lastly just change what you see on the map if you want and that is it ladies and gentlemen this is railroad studio it's a really powerful app and i give props to the creators of it they're doing a fantastic job keeping it up to date, and I hope now you guys can use it to do all sorts of crazy stuff. I can't wait to see it. Alright everyone, my name's Kist, but before I go... <coughs> turns out not so many of you are subscribed. It's free, it doesn't hurt anybody, and if you want, you can always take it back later. And since you're here, don't forget to ring that notification bell to make sure you don't miss any new videos from me. I got some projects in the work, and I'm really excited to share it with you in the future. Alright. My name's Kist, and thank you for watching. Bye-bye.